Okay, now I'm going to set to finish this off with at least five different sources, right? And we'll talk a little bit about why five different sources matters. And I'm trying to use each source fairly equally, you know, so I'm not just using like one foot from one source and then a whole body from another. So the reason I say five or more is this is to pay attention to the legal guideline, which is not the same thing as a legal precedent, but it's a, a sentencing guideline or a judgment guideline, which says that in order to take a work from being a derivative work, which means it relies on someone else's work, to being an original work, it has to be transformed at least 20%. So that is the legal guideline. What does that mean? <laughs> and that's widely open to interpretation, and Disney has a lot more lawyers than I have, right? But one way that I can think of that is if you take from at least five different sources, right? Five times 20 is 100. So then only any one piece that you've used is only about 20% of your vision, right? So your overall piece is not fully reliant on another derivative work to that extent. So that's why I kind of play with five. Now, if you just do two, you're really risking, you know, over relying on, on someone else's image. And if you just do three, just do four, it's still more and more likely that it's basically one image that you've dressed up and changed, but it's still a, a derivative image. So like if I gave this guy a fancy hat from one source, or I gave him mittens from another source, right? That's derivative because it's still clearly trading on the recognizability of this image, which is someone else's intellectual property. But if I take away that recognition and instead like Arturo Herrera does when he cuts out his brush strokes and collages with them or cuts out other people's brush strokes, if I'm just using it for its lines, its shapes, its textures, and I'm freely changing them and transforming them to meet my needs, which is something you can't do with traditional collage, right? But with digital collage, we can absolutely warp and twist and change however much we like. then it's much less likely that someone will have that complaint of infringing on their, their image rights. So that's gonna be our guideline for the class. Whenever we are doing compositing, we want at least five references and we wanna use those references uh, as equally as possible not over relying on, on one. And then after five that are kind of co-equal parts, puzzle pieces to our vision of our work, only then can we add new things, you know, to whatever degree we need, like add the hat, add the gloves, All right? All right, so I've got this nice little swirling mess here. So now I'm just gonna go in draw some shapes with my lasso and then delete them out from layers underneath the layer where I want. And they can be all kinds of different things like the belt. But notice I can only delete from a layer if it's selected, but that selection can move between these different layers. The shield, go back to that. The shoulder plate. Now I said you can have as many as eight different references. But you can see you might not need that many, right? 
so don't be afraid to edit. Because now I've got all the components I need to kind of have my, my own vision for how this might look in black and white. And we first have to solve it in black and white before we can do the other things we have planned. It's just a good general design rule. Make sure it works in black and white first, and then it's more likely to work in color. Color can't save a composition. Beast man's going to be orange. All right. And now I'm just looking for the areas that are the most dense with lines and kind of taking out ones I think aren't very helpful from different layers. You can always do Command Z. And every once in a while you might have to use Command Plus to zoom in and do a more fine-tuned cutout. I like this little knot here. So I'm going to select just roughly within all of this. This is part of Machine Man, I think. Like ropes tying it all together. And then I just delete from every layer that's not the Machine Man layer, and it will open it up just like that. So it kind of sits on top. But then this part of Machine Man I don't want. Now, how do you change your selection? Because right, I'm doing kind of sloppy selections here, and that's fine. If I want to add to a, a selection that's active, I can hold down Shift, and you'll get a little plus sign next to your lasso tool or any selection tool you're using, and that will add to its shape. In this case, I want to actually delete from my selection. So if I hold down Option, it will cut away. So I want to leave this black line here. So that cuts away from it. Oops. And you can always do Command Z. There we go. That's what I want. All right. So now I've got this swirling dynamic thing. There might be little bits I want to get rid of and delete and mess with. And I might get lost in the layers sometimes and not know what belongs to what. That's where the eyeballs come in. But for the most part, I think I'm ready.
So what, what I do now is I go to the very top layer and I hold down Option. Now this is a shortcut that I've never found anywhere. You just kind of learn through experience, but I'm teaching it to you now. If you hold down Option and then go to Layer, Merge Visible, it will not flatten the image. Instead, it will make a duplicate of all the layers in one merged layer on top, which is extremely helpful. So now everything is in one place, all the whites, all the blacks, in normal 100% opacity. Then I'm just going to clean up anything that's missing by going to Image Adjustments. We're going to learn more about this in our first assignment. And I'm going to brighten the midtones by moving that midtone slider, that gray triangle, to the left and maybe even moving the white a little bit, and then maybe moving the black in a little bit. So what this does is it sharpens the blacks, right? Increases the, the lightness of the midtone to get rid of any of those kind of paper shadows and darkens the black. So now I have a really crisp black and white image. The next thing I'm going to do is click on the magic wand, which is under the, the lasso, and I'm going to turn off under the options at the top, contiguous, and I'm going to keep its default tolerance, which is 32, and I'm going to click on the white. Now this is new, so just watch and see what it does. What the magic wand does is it selects pixels that are similar to each other. If I have contiguous turned on, it will only select the pixels that are similar to each other that are also touching each other. So that would then select all that stuff, right? But I want all the white pixels in this whole layer. So I'm going to turn off contiguous and click on the white and then hit delete. Because this isn't multiply mode. Now this is normal mode. Now I have just black lines. I've done what Arturo Herrera does when he uses an X-Acto knife and cuts out the line work from a coloring book. Right? So now that I have that, I have an image that I can just move and erase from and edit as I want. If I want to turn on my white background to see it more clearly, I can. And I can take the whole thing and transform it, rotate it, and see how it looks from all these different angles, right? It's pretty fun. Looks very dynamic. I can warp it as a whole now. Now when I'm happy with it, I'm going to save it, right? And for the first thing we save, just the black and white version, I want you to have the white background turned on, right? And actually it won't matter because I'm going to have you save it as a JPEG so you can see the difference. So actually we can turn the background off, but when I say file save as, and I keep the same name with my name and a description, and I'm going to always save to the desktop, so I hit Command D to navigate to the desktop. Instead of keeping it as a Photoshop file, I am going to change its format, its digital format to JPEG, the most basic compressed image file. Then hit Save. That's gonna allow me to say how big it should be. I can move it all the way to quality 12 and it's still under five megabytes because it's mostly just black and white pixels, even though it's high resolution. Say OK. And I'm going to see it on the desktop there. I can always hit F11 to reveal the desktop. But you'll notice that my JPEG, because it's a JPEG format, filled in the empty space with white. That's what JPEG does. JPEG is always a rectangle. Right? It will fill in empty space with white. Now I'm going to add color. So I'll turn on that white background so you can see. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer make an exact copy of it. But instead of copy paste, which would look like this, command A, command C, command V, you see how copy paste offsets it? I don't want it to offset a copy. I want it to put it exactly in the same place. So I'm gonna delete that layer. And instead, I'm just gonna select my combined layer that's on top and hit command J. Now I have two layers that are both on top. This top layer, I'm just gonna double click on the layer space and go to color overlay click it, choose a color, and say OK. The problem was it was at zero opacity.